expectation. The internal belief that you'll achieve something. The results from Chile are not what I hoped for. But despite our planning and preparation, this is not where I want to be. Things don't always go our way, do they? How's the cliche go? Lower your expectations and you'll never be disappointed. But if racing is your job, then lowering your expectations really isn't an option, is it? Good to be back here in sunny Santa Monica, California. You know, just nice little comfy 75, 80 degrees, a little different than Scotland. And it's just always good to come home and sleep in your own bed and see the lady and the eight pound chihuahua. Come on. I gotta find this spot. Yeah, Paige wakes up around 6.30 in the morning eats breakfast with me, and we go for a walk. She'll run for a bit, maybe chase some squirrels. Then she eats her breakfast, and she's exhausted, so she goes to sleep. You know, takes her morning nap. Come back from riding, walk her again. It's a lot of work, man, she's high maintenance. Come on, hey, we gotta go this way. Come on, let's go. It's just the airports that suck. Um, just that whole mess and like sitting on a plane, but going to all these places is, it's amazing, right? Travel all over the world, riding our bikes in these insane places. So you definitely get good at it, packing the bags and find some ways of killing some time and try to stay away from the really airport food. Before the sport became a buzzword, they were racing here. 10 years they've been at it. If racing mountain bikes down rugged, steep terrain has a home, this is it. So now we're headed to France. I really like the place. So rad, super raw, fast. Don't get me wrong, there's some, some switchbacks in there, but just epic, man. Mountain biking at its purest form. So I'll stay away from the fondue and it should be a good time. If you had to explain enduro to a four-year-old, you might simply describe it as taking your bike and going downhill faster than anyone else. And if your goal is to lose altitude quicker than the next guy, France has plenty of it for you to try your luck on. Nico Vuillouz has won the Downhill World Championships 10 times. And after injuries at the end of 2013, and again in the off-season, Valois has the Frenchman back exactly where he belongs, going downhill quickly. Yeah, I had two real good stages, uh, eighth and a ninth. Uh, second stage, OTB, but still okay, run like 16th, so I think it happened. But just try to get three more clean ones. For some reason, Renee Wildhaber didn't seem to be on a lot of people's list of contenders for glory here. Despite the sponsors listed on his jersey, he still works winters as a ski instructor and still continues to go very fast on his own terms. For me, it was a big adventure to discover those races, starting mountaintops with a beautiful view and going down as fast as possible fascinated me. Rene, when he was winning all the mega avalanche, Rene Wildaber was a guy that I was, I had some respect for him. 
he was fast, but he was always smart and nice and uh, fair play. So this is something I really like. I try to beat him and to go faster than him, but always respect and, uh, and try to follow his example of you can win without being a dick. Chalk it up to collective amnesia that a six-time winner of the Mega Avalanche and sixth overall in the 2013 EWS wasn't predicted to be amongst the top contenders. Maybe it's because for a guy who's ridden nearly everywhere in the world, one place Renee's yet to visit is the Enduro World Series podium. Yeah, the biggest lesson I learned over all these years that I still have to learn a lot and adapt to new things. Adapting to all these venues is, is challenging, but at the end of the day, it definitely makes you a better bike rider. I personally just try to find the flow, and it's, it sounds dumb, but like, have fun, man. <laughs> it's so simple. If fun is the recipe for success, here in France, that recipe has been equal parts lift access, massive elevation, and being able to ride your bike pretty much as fast as you care to go. Try to ride smooth, I guess. You know, be light on the bike, and those big ones you don't wade into. So it's just about getting from top to bottom real smooth and just carrying speed through sections. Point your bike downhill and hang on. Easy, right? But 39,000 feet of elevation loss over a weekend tends to take a toll. Martin Mays saw his race, and more than likely his shot at a top overall result for the season, disappear. Two flats. Nico Vuyuz saw his comeback attempt aborted. DNF. Justin Liov went from first to 11th with one bit of bad luck. And Jared Graves and Rene Wildhaber proved that despite a supersized amount of descending over the weekend, experience and strategy are as important as they've always been. Illness in Chile, adaptation in Scotland, and a few more could have, would have, and should haves than anyone wanted. After an early season full of unrealized potential, things are now heading in the right direction. A top career result, a top 10 finish, a huge step towards making reality meet expectation.